Well, we are here, safely ensconced, back in the steam tunnels. Snowy day up here in Boston. You know, it's sort of a pajama party vibe up in here, I think. You know, got the kids home from school downstairs, trying to trying to keep them out from underfoot. But welcome back to the steam gentlemen, or as I, you know, may have to put out there and and reconsider uh, three uh, the name renaming the podcast to Three Guys with Cats. What do we think about that? <laughs> how, how do we land on that? Because I just was, I was thinking about that. A little that on the week. nose, I'm, but yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just, yeah, you know, it's kind of funny. I was thinking about that as it was a week. I'm like, you know, three dudes, right, coming into the podcast. We know we can sometimes overdo the, the dude vibe. We, 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 we do our best people out there, steam people. But yeah, all, all three of us are, are like all cat owners. There's not a dog between us. Like, I just am wondering, like, statistically, like what the odds are on that, you know? <laughs> and we don't mind either. Like, I don't dislike dogs, but I'm totally ca- happy owning cats. I don't know about you guys. But, you know? I uh, I came from a family that appreciated animals, so I'm with yeah. you. But I have technically no preference other than the fact that I, at this point in my life, or really ever in my life, wanted to wake up at four o'clock or five o'clock to walk something right um that being said i did have a dog once on my own when i was uh like 12 because it was sort of a family right that we had like everyone at a certain point got a dog my brother still holds a grudge against me for the dog that he had and still would prefer over me and they had to get rid of him because the dog like didn't like infants so that was a problem yeah. but i ended up getting a dog and long story short i was so bad at rearing a dog at 12 which you know understandable that this dog which was he loved me i know he did but i didn't know how to handle it by the way it was a doberman pincher german shepherd mix oh, have fun right. with that when you're 12 and that's the first <laughs> dog you're raising right. And that's the first dog you're raising. And you got the dog because you convinced your parents that you can handle it. And then like first day, you immediately understand you can't fucking handle this. So a year (laughs) into this and me and this dog are just like barely speaking terms. I let my I open up my garage door, unleash the dog. And it's basically like, you know what? Have a good life. Like, go ahead. Do your thing. I hope I never see you again. Maybe get hit by a car. Like, that's where I was at. I, I know it's dark, but look, I was 12. Bear with me. (laughs) <laughs> two days later this dog comes running back two days later because we've already passed 48 mark my parents are like all right it's pretty clear our, our kid just literally just let loose a dog like that's that's kind of fucked up we're just gonna not talk about it we're just gonna you know try to move away from this whole subject like my whole house is like we're not gonna talk about this two days later this dog comes running up jaws filled with like blood and mud and i swear to god if there's a shit eating grin on a a face of a dog like the happiest look you've ever seen this dog had it and then two days later my parents like oh okay we we gotta give this dog away because you literally tried to lose your dog (laughs) you tried Mm. to lose your dog (laughs) me and the cat makes sense in a lot of different ways (laughs) (laughs) i mean it's kind of spooky because you and I have almost the same story on that, that we had, you know, uh, I, I had I, apparently as an infant, uh, my family owned a dog that growled at me and wanted to like kill me like in the crib. So that dog had to go. So fair enough. Thanks. Thanks. Pa- mm. Thanks for, you know, getting the, the lowest bar of parenting again, guys. I appreciate that. Mom, Dad. <laughs> like, uh, well, not, you know, let's, let's yeah, not let the dog love when they had that them. moment of like, do we keep the dog though? Like, can we make oh, it yeah. work? Like, like, can we uh, like, what do we do here? Yeah. You know, how uh, much damage think, can our new child have? <laughs> I believe, I believe she was a cocker spaniel. So I think that makes it easier. I mean, you know, come on. It's just like, who, who really likes cocker spaniels? I don't know, man. They're just, you know, yeah, they're kind of, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're not obnoxious dogs. But I, too, I had a disastrous run with a golden retriever, so I don't even have the excuse of the Doberman Pinscher German Shepherd mix. I mean, that at least sounds badass, right? You know, but yeah. I just couldn't keep up. I couldn't keep up with a golden retriever, poor, poor, poor pooch. So we did give, give it away to a, a better family, uh, uh, and that's good. But, yeah, I think these days I consider it just like training for having teenage kids because, you know, the cat – Basically, every once in a while demands attention. And when that time comes for that attention, it, it, you must give it, you know, give it forthright. And then in between that, it's sort of like, yeah, fuck you. Feed me, clean up my shit, and that's it. <laughs> right? So it's just, you know, <laughs> cats, ki- cats, kids. Yeah, just such a, such a little, such a, such an overlap uh, going on, uh, going on there. But 
doesn't really relate to our, our subject matter, except that I, I want to try and uh, make some overlap. But uh, other than that, wow, uh, 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 Star Child, how's your week going so far? Uh, interestingly enough, better than my cats. Um, so <laughs> r- r- really good. Yeah, doing all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh definitely there's probably a variety of reasons i had the pets on, on the mind but you know we we send thoughts and prayers to magic okay we we definitely we love the cat you know and i pass those on open that open that yes and they're worth their weight in gold we know that mm-hmm. but uh you know uh, as it goes I, I am glad you're having a better week than than your cat though i mean considering yeah. the considering so well i mean he's that. uh you know he's an old cat and um as far as cats go as i hear about just nightmare stories from other people and their cats he's a good cat relative uh, to other people's cats because yeah if he scratched my couch that motherfucker be homeless but he doesn't do shit like that, you know. So he's a pretty damn good cat. So <laughs> he he deserves all that love. Ah, uh, yeah. And we got uh, uh, and perfect perfect way for me to kick it back to the three of clubs. Check in on his week as this cat just jumped up on his lap and uh, is, is demanding demanding that attention that I was talking about. It's like okay, now the loving will commence. Dude. Yeah, Panda has a funny way of knowing when she's being talked about and. I mean, she was sleeping up until we were talking about cats, and then we started talking about cats, and now all of a sudden she's like, "Hey, what's going on? What are you doing? What? What's up? What's Look at my cat on? ass." Yeah, exactly. Which, exactly. which is a weird way that cats show feline show love. It's like, "Hey, yeah. how you doing? Check out my ass. We she are look best at friends. that anus. Look at it. <laughs> look at it. You can't look away." <laughs> how you feel about chocolate starfish? And I don't mean Limp Biscuit. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so glad that you know, but let's that's why people come here, baby, because they're Fred Durst <laughs> wow. talk. That is why they yeah. are here. Hey, no one else, no one else will seats. make Fred Durst references. I mean, you, Fred Durst. you gotta now come here. Durst. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think who knows? Here's the funny part if we could somehow launch our career and relaunch Limp Biscuit's career, that would just be. That would be 2020s to the peak, I think. That would mm-hmm. definitely be we're a little, peak we're 2020s. A little late. We're a little late. They they came out with an album recently. All oh, right. Fair. Well, yeah, but they yeah, but we obviously doing well exactly. if you knew about it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Clearly. Exactly. Like watch making another album and doing well. Two different things. Let's face it. You know? mm. But <laughs> speaking of the subject at hand, uh, Fred Durst is actually a decent director, oh, movie cool. director. Good on I'm him. not saying good. I'm saying decent. Decent. All right. Good on him. Hey, I, better I than all... his rapping skills, which In... leads to another sort of part of our subject, which is I always have to clarify for people who want to make fun of the Limp Bizkit's run. It did include Method Man. So easy on how far easy you go on, with exactly, the you know. castration. It it ain't like it ain't like Method Man did it for free. I mean, it is. Oh no. Like no, no, like, no, 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 oh, no, man. That's I mean, that's yeah. pure Michael Caine, Jaws three. I'm in it to buy a new house. Energy, but right, still there, it. still oh. there. Okay, I'm gonna give you some peak. Uh, you, if if I had a point system, you would have earned peak steam points there, Rashawn, making the Michael Caine Jaws the Revenge reference. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> doing it, doing Mario it for the Star. vacation home. That was beautiful. That was absolutely beautiful and and accurate. Yes, and despite yeah. all the shit I'll give to Fred Durst and all that, it's the the shit a guy with a podcast can can freely give, having never actually you know <laughs> produced an album that was on the national charts and or made a movie that actually got produced. So you know, take everything I'm saying with that grain of salt. But bringing it back and putting a little salt on our subject today, we were uh, in our usual discussions of what we want to talk about each week. We kind of stumbled across the idea of men of honor. There you go. Just came up with the episode title on the fly. Um, and as you, you know, shocker to all of us, you know, uh, to all of us, all three of, of us really love our comic books and we love our comic book movies and we love our comic book heroes. Uh, and, but it's impossible to sort of to look at comic books and the heroes they're in and not sort of uh, notice that it's all about the characters and in some cases their codes of conduct or their ideas of who they are, the lines they have, the lines they don't want to cross, the lines they inevitably cross. And that's what keeps us reading. That's what keeps us watching. So that was where we wanted to start this week. And it brought me around to 
uh, as I am a, a, a big uh, MCU fan, uh, as, as most of you will know, and you know, it's really not that hard to be nowadays, let's face it, it is the, the largest corporate end of things. Um, I you know, find myself sitting here and sitting in this time and this place here in January 2022, and I, I was thinking a lot about Steve Rogers. Steve Rogers is Captain America. Um, and it, you know, it's an interesting place to start with for me because the character himself starts in a, in a more idyllic time, or at least in our ideas of a more idyllic time of world war two. Who would have thought that, uh, you know, a devastating event that killed over 60 million people is considered a more idyllic, you know, and, and softer and gentler time, but yet it is the character itself comes out of a very stark reality, right? Uh, not, you know, I think, and I'm still going to go out on the limb nowadays, Nazis are bad. I, I don't want to court a Nazi audience. I don't, <laughs> I'm not going to worry about offending Nazis uh, out there who, you know, are suddenly now going to be, oh, well, fuck it. I'm yeah, not listening I'm to this gonna podcast go anymore. I'm going to go ahead and clear that up. Steam gentleman strictly says without any sort of, you know, lack of clarification, fuck Nazis. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> fuck you. Fuck you right. straight to hell. And then fuck Absolutely. you some more. Fuck, You're not fuck fine, Nazis. people. Fuck off. Keep fucking off till you see the sign that if says I'm fuck not off clear, and then fuck off some more. If I'm not clear, I hope every Nazi is shot up in the space and then had their freaking uh, helmet ripped off. Yes. I mean that. <laughs> With, without a doubt. So I think I think we can safely we can safely and securely lose that uh, you know lose that audience point. I got no I got no issue there. Um, but it, you know, when you create the character in that backdrop, as Superman too also had a lot of that going on, you know, talking about tr- you know, truth, justice, the American way, you have a character that has a, a, a real stark foil, a real stark counterpoint, right? That he just gets to go drop behind enemy lines with the howling commandos, kick the shit out of Nazis, punch Hitler in the face and go home, right? And that is, it's a good storyline. It's a storyline that um that absolutely should happen and and that you know that we encourage but it it did run into the question of after uh that particular threat is defeated what do you do with that character right like there's you know even even in the lore they end up putting him on ice right they end up freezing him for to, to bring him into literally the yeah yeah, they literally are like, shit, we don't know what to do with this guy anymore. Right? We defeated the Germans. Like, uh, you know, and, and it, it, it interestingly reflect, reflects the question that America was facing at that particular time, right? Coming out of the war, being the clear victor on multiple fields, right? With the, you know, probably overall, overall a lower number of casualties at 300,000, which is still a staggering number. Um, you know, but compared to Russia and compared to, 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 to what much of the other world had faced as far as people dying, their industrial base untouched, right? Uh, and coming back to that kind of strength, there really began that question of like, okay, well, wait, who, who are we now and what are we doing? And that, that of course, goes through all kinds of political turmoil that, uh, that you can't end up uh, a- ignoring. But what I find the most interesting is in the, uh, I started reading comics in what became a second golden age. And why it was the second golden age is we were dumb kids who had a lot, uh, who had had the extra spending cash because uh, our parents were willing to give it to us and just get us out of their way. Um, <laughs> we liked reading it's comics. And, yeah, and we were dumb enough to think that any, um, that any uh, 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 new label was going to become valuable because the generations before had actually read the comic books and hadn't hermetically sealed them and, you know, thought that, Oh, you know, we saw these values on some of those comics and we're like, Oh, we're going to get, we're going to do that too. (laughs) So, (laughs) and that gave the comic book companies a lot of leverage to produce a lot of new labels and start with number ones. And then we'd all go out and buy like three of them and, you know, slap, slap some of them in bags and, you know, convince ourselves we were going to retire on it. It was basically Bitcoin before there was Bitcoin, right? <laughs> so <laughs> that that was it. But from it brought one interesting storyline, which is sort of the rebellion of Captain America and that choice he made. Now, in the comic book storyline, the government comes to Steve and says, well, you're government property, right? It's It's, you know, we own you. We own the name. We own the suit. We own the shield. And so if you're going to do that, 
then we get to give you your margin errors, right? <laughs> we literally, figuratively, and we get to tell you what to do. And Steve did not like that. So he's, you know, he, he, he puts on a black suit and becomes the U.S. agent. And there's a whole lot of other sub, you know, sub, subtopics that, that, that come from that. Focusing a little more on how I thought they did it better and this question of the code of conduct, because it, you know, Rogers then starts to embody the very struggle that we've had for a long time in this country and continue to have, right? What, you know, where is it our ideals? Where is it the need for law and order? Where is it the need for a system of government or a central system of government or personal freedoms? And that weird way that one side of the political spectrum overlaps with the other, right? In, uh, in the films, it's the idea of this, you know, the idea that the, uh, uh, through their actions, the superheroes have ended up causing a couple of mass casualty collateral damage events, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and addresses, shout out to some of our earlier, uh, earlier episodes when I talked about never actually wanting to live in a comic book universe, right? In the very fact that there could be a 9-11 event on any given day walking to, walking to work with two superheroes. Every day, just yeah. deciding to, you know, piss each other off and, you know, knock, knock skyscrapers down. They're actually attempting to address that, that very problem, right? They, uh, uh, in the films, I, uh, I, are they in Wakanda? Or they, I, I can't remember if they're actually in Wakanda or in, an, in another fictional African nation. But, you know, they're, they're fighting and they, you know, they kill a lot of civilians, right? So mm -hmm. <laughs> the governments of the world are like, um, this is getting a little messy, guys. And we kind of want to, to rein this in a little bit. Uh, and Steve's character is, you know, is, is, is that question of, you know, how much government oversight is okay? Where is the personal freedom? Where is what that, what that goes to? And I noticed that it's just an interesting, uh, it's an interesting overlap that I don't feel he's entirely anti-government, but yet he is not entirely pro-government in this stance, right? At, at, at that time. And he even ends up coming back in and joining the Avengers. But it is, you know, it represents to me that weird overlap between the, the political ends of the, the ends of the spectrum and the, and, and the extreme. Uh, you know, I, I, I know from my life growing up that it's very interesting to me to, to see people right now on one end of the political spectrum talk about not trusting the FBI, um, which if you talk to my friends on the other end of the political spectrum, <laughs> they've sort of said, hey, we didn't trust them for a long time before that. <laughs> <laughs> but yet they might be a little more kindly predisposed towards that idea idea right now because they feel the other end of the political spectrum is not trusting him for the wrong reasons or the right reasons or what have you. So I just found that very fascinating how even back in the 90s, somewhere that Stan Lee saw that potential for that conflict and that question of, you know, of, you know, where, where does personal freedom end and personal responsibility begin and vice versa? Like, where is the right point? Where is the right point where you put yourself to an ideal and you do your best, but where is also the point where you have to say, that's too far. I can't go across that bridge. I can't stand across there. So to me, that makes it a fascinating kind of code of honor, right? That, they've, that they struggle with to a certain extent and they still struggle with, right? Um, it was really well done, I thought, in the films, in the struggle and, and of all people, uh, the one who you would never have thought was gonna be standing up for government regulation uh, was the you know was the billionaire playboy genius right <laughs> was the elon mm. musk was the elon musk of the avengers who's like no i think we need to i think we need to do this <laughs> right <All> right <laughs> whereas you know blonde haired you know your blonde haired blue eyed uh you know for, uh, favored son of the of the avengers was saying hey you know i think there's there's room to say no here i think there's a, there's room to to object where where do i get my my own determination in this in this matter. So that's really all I had for it. But I just thought it was, you know, it's it's been on my mind a lot lately. It's something I like about the character. Uh, I do like that the MCU has talked very openly about that. And then, of course, they also they even you know started to talk openly um, about race in this last series in uh, uh, what became Cap, uh, which became Falcon and Winter Snowman, and then uh, Winter Snowman, Winter Soldier. Yes, uh, yes, <laughs> yes. Falcon and Winter Soldier, and then became Winter Captain Snowman. America. Winter Snowman. Yes. yes. So it just well, I'm looking 
looking outside at a wonderful, uh, wonderful uh, winter image here uh, that just goes so well with it. And so clearly that's what I'm going to be doing with the kids later. Um, but even admitting openly that, you know, that, uh, that uh, the mantle, the ideal of this should not be just about Steve Rogers, right? You know, that, that it is there. And they talked openly in that show about uh, when, um, about, you know, we, uh, about, you know, the, the burden of handing, handing that mantle over to a black man who's, you know, got, uh, you know, who, who, there is no way you can get away from the quote unquote complicated history in the U.S. here, but yet still he ends up picking up the mantle and still wanting to, wanting to represent to the best of, of his abilities, whatever that mantle ends up representing. So I'll, I'll take, that'll, that'll be the end of my 10 minutes. I'll take that. Uh, you know, oh, wait, but, but that was you didn't minutes. say like, where like do you, man? where do you feel like he crossed the line though? Which, uh, which Steve? Yeah. I don't, you know, it's that interesting question. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know if he crossed the line. I guess that's really always the question. I think he you know? definitely crossed the line in uh, uh, civil war because yes, a, a big argument came along because um, you know once again it's the blue eyed white guy who's deciding for himself which laws he absolutely. gets to uh, absolutely he has to follow you know and right you know, it's like black you know black people we can't help but look at things from through a through that lens and it's like oh. So he can just run off and do shit. Like what kind of message is that saying, you know, Absolutely. To, you know, to these uh, right wing lunatics who are going to turn around and say, yeah, just like Captain America, when he felt like his friend was being persecuted, he was like, screw the entire world government. And right. for the record, just speaking from a civil liberties point, because, um, you know, uh, I'm a big Batman fan and I have to appreciate the fact that, yeah, as far as the principles of america yeah you're guilty of sin you're just entirely wrong you are not qualified and you do not have the right right to just exactly. go around yeah. denying people their basic civil liberties like they right. always try to set it up like it's obvious this person's guilty like they're actively robbing this bank and it's like we get that and we understand that but let's be clear about one thing you don't have the right to go along. You do not have the credentials or the training. And for the most case, the know-how to just yes. jump into this situation and make it markedly worse because that kind of started that superhero arms race where it was yes. like, all right, well, super villains got to start upping the ante now too. And it's like, well, fucking great. Thanks. Superheroes. Uh, uh, and Captain America is definitely part of that. I think he's, he's part of that superhero. I just wanted to make those two points. He's part of the superhero supervillains arms race. And he does send the message of, yeah, if you're a white guy and you know, the government wants to hurt your friend who's guilty as sin, by the way, like yeah. he needs to be <laughs> there, there, brought in. That, like, yes. Right. He was exactly. a brainwashed assassin who did God <laughs> knows what, like he needs to be fucking brought in. Like no yeah. question. And he should be no. fucking arrested. But Captain America decides like, no, he's my friend. And so it doesn't happen. And I thought I, you know, I thought that was the, the I thought that was, you know, I thought that was exactly the, you know, I think you're right. That that is the, the, the crux of it. I liked that they went right at it, you know, and that, you know, Steve is not necessarily in the right there. Right? He <laughs> wasn't just... in the right. He wasn't in the right at all. Your friend, oh, right. when he yeah. hears certain words, turns into an unstoppable murder machine. He needs help. <laughs> <laughs> he needs to be fucking brought in. in. Okay. He Preach. has killed God knows how many people for a foreign government. And when he hears some secret words, him and his cyborg super arm turn into merciless killing machines. Machines. So no, you guys no. don't get to just you know, have some kind of Grace and Frankie retirement out in California. Like, no, <laughs> no, you don't fucking I, get to do that. Cap no, I, <laughs> I, I, I love that. I, I, you know, and I, but I like that they're even willing to write that. You know what I'm saying? I like that they're willing to write that and look at that. I also even like uh, going back to, uh, to um, uh, Falcon and, and Winter Soldier uh, as, you know, 
they they put out the obvious thing. Firstly, Sam gives back the shield, right? And the first thing they do is give it to a white guy. <laughs> just mm-hmm. like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> you did the right thing, Sam. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> we got to give it to this white guy right here. Yeah. But I even liked his character that it had, like he represents it so much that in my opinion, that goes on for white people in America because he is made by the system. He is propped up by the system. And- uh, uh, perpetuates it and in his personal life his best friend is black and his wife is black right so he's not in that personal bigoted space but he's absolutely continuing the races uh, the the racism of america that is deeply entrenched so i thought that they were pretty ballsy on that to to, mm. to really go right to it you know the 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 i'm not per you know the 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 you know quote unquote i'm not racist because it's like well yeah you still are but this is a complicated issue <laughs> mm. since we're talking about that series and people who should be in jail how exactly was the guy who murdered someone in cold blood in front of everyone available at the end of the series like how is that (laughs) (laughs) i'm sitting there watching the finale and like the series was all right it was cool i I liked it 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 wasn't mind-blowing people need to slow down on how they talk about the mcu for a lot of different reasons but but like i'm sitting there watching i'm like all right so last time we saw this guy he was basically on trial for straight up cold-blooded murder and then he's here now like and and and, and like it would be one thing if they made it seem like he escaped which i i I, i'd be like all right i understand he escaped he's trying to do good now but he's also a fugitive against the law and like that makes sense but no like the authorities come up after and they're like hey good job man like i thought this guy yeah (laughs) was he arrested for first degree murder like how is this working but then as Uh... accurately pointed out it's hard to swallow these scenes when we have real life moments of exactly that someone who in the eyes of certain people and unfortunately normally the power brokers of this country yeah when they do something that they deem is maybe vigilante justice but justice with a capital j and capital letters throughout they're willing to forgive possibly you know just running up and murdering people that you know maybe not even be in the state you live in things like that it's Mm -hmm. just Exactly. Well, it's it rings dead on. I mean, like, I, like it or not, it rings yeah. true, right? When you asked that question of how he's available, my first answer was "Welcome to America." <laughs> right? yeah. That was the first thing. I, I, you know, your 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 point is absolutely right, and it uh, and it rings true. And with that, then I well, want to throw talk it. talk about "Welcome to America," and this has nothing to do with what I was going to say, but it does harken back to a conversation Greg and I had at the start of COVID pandemic, where I flat out was like. White America is about to find out what it feels like to be black. <laughs> and Greg's like, what the hell do you mean? And I'm like, because all of a sudden you're about to have a bunch of people show up and tell you a bunch of arbitrary rules that you have to follow and they're going to be in your shit if you don't. And it could lead to some even fucked up things. Well, sure and enough, here it, it goes. And, and sure enough, it took was like literally three weeks of people who are getting paid told you can't just go anywhere you want and they lost their shit people focused on <laughs> mm-hmm. some other things that happened in the summer of 2020 but i focused on people being at governor's lawns and like breaking down gates and basically like we are yeah gonna- they were they were gonna kidnap the governor because you couldn't get ice cream or a fucked up haircut at walmart <laughs> yeah and like Yes, I wow. am tacking hair salons at Walmart. Yes, I Walmart. am. Yes, if you're listening. Another, another audience, offended, another sponsor we just lost, without a doubt. Yep, you, can, you can hit me up. You can hit well, me up. You know what you're doing. Everyone's getting the same haircut. You are better than that. Look, you know what? Go ahead and start the clock, because I, I didn't want to start this. Right. I'm just going to go ahead and jump in, because I'm going to go back to a point that I had earlier, which also means I, I don't let go of shit. So, yes, I'm going to talk about Lost Boys again. Because I hearken back to shit. I don't let go. Just like Vin Diesel. You hear me, Vin Diesel? You hear me, bud? I don't let go of shit. You could be doing better, but I don't let go of shit. Vin Diesel. I, side note, I also feel like he's going to end up hearing some of this shit. And if he's as, uh, let's say, interested in exacting odds the way the press kind of makes them i feel like i'm gonna run into this dude and he's gonna beat the shit out of me like i'm not gonna have a chance 
up against this guy. Sure, he may not be able to beat up the Rock. I think most I of think the world got a shot against Vin Diesel. I, I appreciate that, man. I mean, like yeah, I'll stay in there, but uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and put it also on wax. I, uh, I'm also probably leading to a moment where. I'm going to run into Vin Diesel somehow. Like, this dude's just going to pop up where I live um, in this side of Boston. And he's going to be like, yeah, so uh, you want you want to talk about trying harder? But anyway, I don't you, you a- have my, I just want to say you have my word. I will stand there and be the guy who do, he just grabs by the face and pushes the fuck out of the way. Like, you got my word <laughs> on that. Like, that's all I can give you, but I will give it to you. Okay. That's that, uh, you know, just you got no my problem. word there. Like, that, yeah, that's all it's going to happen. It's, uh, you know, I will be the white guy who gets pushed the fuck out of the way. That's <laughs> how that goes. But okay. I own it. But yeah, I don't let shit go. So before I get back to what I was going to go to, I'm just going to go ahead and call you out, Salons and Walmart. You know what you're doing. You have more talent, like my man Vin Diesel, than you're actually showing up. And I get that you're getting paid, but you could do better. And this is what I'm talking about. And you know what the fuck I'm talking about. If you're listening, if you're actually one of our listeners, which I find amazing for a lot of reasons, and thank you. But if you're listening, I just want to point out, Everyone doesn't need to have the Karen fucking haircut. Like you have more, (laughs) you are a paid consultant. When they sit in your chair, you can look at Deborah and you can say, honey, that, that look went out in 2013. The, the Kate plus eight doesn't need to continue. Like we can do more things. You can blow them up. You can do more. You have more control. So anyway, back to Lost Boys, because as I'm controlling this, this is where I'm going. And I had nothing to talk about in today's subject. Um, I was absolutely deathly ill when Josh brought it up. I love Josh. So I'm like, yeah, let's talk about it. And, and Greg's got some good points. So uh, uh, this isn't going to be a complete car train wreck. Car crash, maybe, but not a train wreck. So anyway, going back I'm to Lost Boys. Uh-huh. People, Thank you, man. Thank you. So people do not give uh, the soundtrack enough credit. People don't understand how much this thing hits. It hits so goddamn hard. I mean, you have one banger that is so good. It tests your limits on how you feel about incest way more than even Game of Thrones, which is incredible considering Game of Thrones has a series really push your limits on incest. But this in one song is so Dude, fucking good. Dude, the opening like, episode. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like, that was, it was like, they, they, hi! They, 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 they make sure to under, let you understand where the hurdles are in, under, in loving Game of Thrones right away. But same thing with one of the songs on the soundtrack for Lost Boys. Like, it's so good that when you're in the chorus, you're like, wait, love is for your brother. How, you got to explain that a little bit more, man. Like, can you put that in like the lyrics description? Cause right now I'm a little, I'm wondering what you mean by love is for your brother, man. But this song's so good. I'm willing to go past it. You also got, we talked about my man, Timmy caps, which I'm going to get back to. And also the fact that in excess is on the soundtrack, but then you also have a version from uh, Robert uh, was it plant. Um, uh, don't let the sun go down on you. I mean, on me, which is an allegory for a lot of different things, which goes back to also how the movie is an allegory for a lot of people argue homosexuality and, and basically being able to be themselves, but also being treated like the monsters. Well, if you listen to the lyrics of, and I think it's originally an Elton John song. It, it is Elton John. Yeah, I think. It's, it yeah. Elton John, yeah, it's yeah, but, I didn't. Yeah, exactly. So it's originally him, but the version on um, on uh, Lost Boys soundtrack uh is robert is it robert plant uh i don't know that i i always i always associate with elton john so i'm not uh yeah uh, anyway. I'll, I'll turn over to yours yeah turn over to your research skills at that point but uh, yeah. it's it's great it's uh anyway so point being is also and then you get back to my man timmy caps and i still believe which needs another episode of love and shout out <laughs> Timmy Caps, once again, if you were in Boston, let me know. We are getting a slice of the beer. I need to hang out with you, my man. But that song is so fucking, it's literally the 80s in five minutes. Like, if you want to know what the 80s was, this is the song you listen to. Why? Because in the 80s, and we've talked about this before, there was a weird run that no matter what movie you're watching, normally an action movie, but not exclusive to, there is a weird drop of a saxophone. Just like, no matter what, out of nowhere, Lethal Weapon did run with this. Like, they were like, we're going to keep this into the 90s. 
but throughout the fucking 80s, it didn't matter. Just you could be watching a drama. You could be watching a horror movie. You could be watching an action. Out of nowhere, it's just a saxophone riff. Like, it normally it's like one long note, right? It's just like, eh, just like, just out of nowhere. It's like, what the fuck? Michael Douglas normally pops up and there's going to be a saxophone riff somewhere. I'm just telling you that right now. If you're watching a movie in the 80s, Michael Douglas is there. There's going to be a saxophone riff. So I still believe when you listen to it, it's also a lot of movies were like weirdly gritty and always in the city and there was always wet. It was always wet and dark in the city in, 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 in these 80s movies and there's always chains. So when you actually listen to the song, I still believe or watch the video, which there is a music video. And I, I highly encourage everyone to watch the mastery, the mastery of my man, I, Timmy I Caps. It. I put it in the uh, I put it in the the uh, show notes of last week. So if you want to go back, people check Bird, it out. Birdman, you beautiful, you beautiful man. So people watch that shit because when you're watching that, you're literally watching, and I kid you not, a fucking montage of the '80s. Like it's just it's it's yes, there are clips of just Lost Boys, but literally it's a montage of the '80s. I, I promise you. I grew up doing it. A lot of people listening, they did too. If you're honest about what I'm talking about, if you're being real, you're going to understand what I'm saying, which where is this going? Because we're talking about men of honor. And frankly, like I said, I didn't know because I started this completely coming out of my ass. So here we go. <laughs> going back to fucking Timmy Caps and the look on uh, the look that he had on Lost Boys when I watched this and how fucking awesome it was the first time I saw it when I was like eight. I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? I actually originally thought for some reason, I brought this up in the last episode, that I thought this was a whole different character because like he just is so prominent in the movie for no damn reason. Like it's not, every movie has like some sort of musical introduction or um, um, interlude or something like that. No, this was like showing up as if he's one of the fucking characters. So immediately in my head at eight, I'm like, wait, is that the dude? Is that like, is that Bill Paxton from fucking Terminator? Because that's what I really went to. Like right at, now I know I brought up Cyborg. In the last episode, I saw Cyborg after, so it made more sense then. But anyway, when I'm watching it the first time, I'm like, wait, is that Bill Paxson from Terminator? Like, is this like his origin story? What the fuck is going on? Fun fun fact, when you go back and you watch that Terminator, they, they really don't look alike. But it makes me think like, oh, OK, so Bill Paxson, who also played someone who on the surface to the rest of society was an honorable guy, but was a complete dick to everyone inside his home in fucking weird science. So it, it, it always goes back to the things of like, why do we have honorable attachments to people we don't know? A lot of times it ends up being basically Bill Paxton. Unfortunately, God rest his soul, ends up being a Bill Paxton character. In, in mm. I, I realized where I was going and how hard I was slamming Bill Paxton. I'm sorry. I'm actually <laughs> uh, now I'm a little upset because now I'm just like completely just shat all over a dead man. But like I'm sure he was a uh, I'm sure he was a beautiful as man. You do. Uh, as I'm you sure, do. I'm as sure he was a beautiful do. man. Uh, in Shout life, out to my man Billy Pax. He, his character was always like a complete douchebag. So it's it's always because as a human species we have a problem of always attaching idealism to everything that we want to make good. And chances are I'm willing to bet it's probably because at one certain time most scientists or anthropologists have pointed out that at this point, we understand that we actually derive from three different sort of hominoid species. Now, I hate to tell people, but in order for one species to get over another, you have to be willing to do some fucking monstrous shit. You have to be willing to take it to the level that next person isn't going to do. A lot of people don't want to see that or think about it, but it's, it's really true when you think about it. If you're up against a clan and that clan doesn't care about what they kill, they're just going to kill everything. You can't sit there and be like, well, we can only kill their warriors because they're going to show up and kill everyone. So every single time there's a moment where we as a species want to introduce idealism into another person to create honor. That's also when you think about how we end up having religion. We have to kind of create these sort of mythos around people to believe in because really we understand we are in fact monsters. We can easily have good and honest people, but we're in fact monsters. We're always monsters in our private lives one way or the other. And it's our ability to keep it back that's allowed us to evolve, but it still doesn't mean we aren't unable 
to let that loose. Think about a child next to a threat that the U.S. deems is a threat. They don't understand that they may be a part of a quote unquote global threat. They're a child who's just around the people they love. And all of a sudden, a bomb fucking erases half of them. They're not going to understand that they were the threat. They were just children living their lives. Or let's say even human beings next to that who had nothing to do with one small group. That's what ends up happening. In order for honor to exist, there has to be a monster behind it to push it forward. It's no different than how the United States was created. If you don't believe me, ask someone of Native American uh, background. Which, back to Lost Boys, I'm sorry, I know I've gone over, but back to Lost Boys and the monsters within, we got this guy who's a beautiful you know, neighbor, welcoming, small business owner, good to his employees, also fucking has a cadre or a clutch or a brood. I looked it up. That's what a collection of vampires is. Also, shout out to the Bridwich, which is one of the best Aqua Teen Hunger Force uh, episodes ever. But this guy also has a clutch of vampires from runaway teenage boys that he has collected. And oh, also, by the way, he's a serial killing, murderous vampire. So everyone wants to think of him as a man of honor, but really, he's a serial killing, vampire, murderer. So think about that the next time you want to look at someone and say, he's a good man. I, uh, mm. I guess got to say, every time we do this show, I realize that, that podcasting is a small time machine because I get to be brought back to somewhere in Framingham in high school, watching, watching a teenage Rashawn running down the halls, just furiously scribbling notes on his book report as he comes to class. <laughs> just, and George Josh. Washington, and then, and then, and that's why. <laughs> and yet, Josh. still somehow stick the landing. It's amazing. Birdman, you give me way too much credit. There's no fucking way in the world I was writing anything while I was reading that book and trying to figure out what I was going to say uh, moments before that assignment had. I was going to say that that's not what that student does. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that student. No, he did, he doesn't do that. If no. there's if if I'm reading anything written, it was already in the book. Like I'm. Just gonna, yeah. like, oh, here's a here's a note here's a yeah. here's an interesting tidbit uh oh did you yeah. know <laughs> did you know <laughs> True so story. napoleon wasn't german yeah that's a note right uh, here now, all right that's a note right there <laughs> wasn't short wasn't short that's all propaganda but uh yeah you know. which is so crazy considering the guy was actually considered tall during his time <laughs> he was he was but the brits man they they got they got mad they throw mad shade through the, mm-hmm. through the papers <laughs> Oh, short little French fucker. Uh, it would be jolly humorous for us to say he was short. Short. You know, they, weren't the first, short. they weren't the first society to use text to shit talk someone to oblivion, but God damn it, <laughs> did they not take it to a whole new level? I mean, they, I know, that was the they, tweet they, of their day. They, 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 for about right, 400 seriously. years, they really took assassinating someone via pen um, to a oh, whole yeah. new level. I yeah. mean, the shit talking that those, those Brits were able to pull off in history were, I mean, sometimes you just got to sit back and be like, you know, bravo, bravo. That is, bravo. That is, that is, that is well, it, it works. It really does. You know, like it was about, you know, uh, uh, ruining a person's honor, making him short, you know, if yes. possible, impotent. You know, if you're willing to go there. Yeah, he was yes. he couldn't get it up either. You know, yeah. like those kind of things were, you know, real charges that were uh um, uh, you know, might make someone act erratically, hopefully, and make a mistake. Yep. Who knows? Well, with that then, you know, with with that salient observation and talking about men of honor, let's 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 kick it back over to the star child who's anchoring us today, but going in the third in the third hole. As we uh, wanted to get him going and get him uh, ready, ready to rock and roll. He said, I'm uh, <laughs> more than happy to reside in the third hole. Um, no king uh, And as it as it descends, as it descends to uh, to Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, he has the letterhead settled on our name because we might as well go ahead and let people know we have cats with the way these conversations <laughs> yeah. say, uh, we may want to go ahead and just go ahead and put I, that I think we can plate. reprint the business cards three men with cats but <laughs> we do the Take cats care. from South Bedrock South Bedrock right represent. from the from the projects of the Shire <laughs> like that's just us <laughs> the Shire projects <laughs> <laughs> it's just us
Oh, yeah, um, but, uh, yeah, well, um, as as a good Catholic, you know, I have to be the person to bring uh, Jesus into the conversation. And then when we, we came up with this idea, I thought about Jesus figures. And I think in pop culture, there is no, there are very few really good Jesus figures. I mean, there's tons of chosen ones, but nothing nails it like Vader. Darth Vader is absolutely the Jesus figure of the modern age. Um, he uh, came from a virgin birth. Uh, no one knows who his father supposedly Palpatine manipulated him in the womb or whatever. I mean, that does get mentioned. I think, manipulated in the, comics, the midi-chlorians. But, but of course yeah, the, the midi-chlorians, whatever the case yes. is. But the point is, she did not stoop and she was pregnant. So um, he uh, is absolutely the Jesus figure. Uh, in all of this. And um, he not exactly like Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ had a big support unit, and he always knew that he was the son of God and he could perform miracles because, you know, it's important to have good self-esteem when you're a kid. But <laughs> Vader, Clearly. on the other hand, he grew up a slave. Now that, I, I really wanted to hold on to that point as much as possible because when you're a slave, you people don't appreciate you have a different perspective on reality. You have a different perspective on your own life because you don't ever feel like you control your life because your master does. Uh, people, whereas they would be kind to someone else or probably cruel to you because they can take the opportunity, like you have a warped sense of reality. The only person he really had, assuming he didn't make a friend, the only person he really had was his mother. And that made him ferociously loyal to his mother. But then all of a sudden, these Jedi come along and they start telling him how special he was. This is totally new for young Vader. He's never been special before. He's never had people cheer him on or have responsibilities. Like, this is great. People believed in him. So he brought them into his circle, leaving his mother. So it goes on and forward. And, like, and so far, he has the Jedi... Uh, uh, on his side, but he doesn't trust the Jedi. Why? Because it's really easy to be idealistic when you come from nothing and when you really have nothing. And when he starts seeing the Jedi, he sees some of this hypocrisy and he sees some of this, you know, selfishness and ineffectual attitudes and in, in the Jedi and all of the politics. And he doesn't like it. Perfect. That sows the seeds. Yoda knew all along. So then we have the first time he crossed the line, which was when his mother was killed and he killed the Raiders. The uh, what were they called? The Tuscan Raiders. The, uh, the Tuscan Raiders. Sand yeah, yeah, yeah the, sand the Sand People, people the Tuscan yeah. Raiders. And he kills them all. He kills the children. He murders every single one of them. And uh, that's the first time. With sand. What's that? I heard he had a problem with sand. He hates <laughs> he hates sand. sand. God, so much. No one, no one said he was a wordsmith. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but by this point, he's got a little bit of a family. You know, like he's got uh, Padme, who he's definitely fallen in love with, but he can't tell anyone about the romance. So that's frustrating him. Yes, he's got his buddy Obi Wan, but Obi Wan's part of the Jedi, and the Jedi, as we just said, are you know ineffectual and hypocritical and don't trust him. Moving forward, uh, he then has uh, Count Dooku, where he crosses the line again. Now, by this point, Count Dooku, we know, cut off his hand, and he was going to kill Palpatine. Now, by this point, Palpatine had already planted it in Vader's young head that he can protect people and that he's willing to trust him because he's not like, you know, the, the crooked Jedi. So he kills Count Dooku for kidnapping Palpatine. Again. You know, we see that he's had these gaps. By this point, he's a hero. Everybody loves him. But he's already shown the fact that he shows this serious loyalty and willing to cross the line for his friends and family. Like, you cross his friends and family, I'm going to butcher you, whether you give yourself up or not, or whether you're a desert person who can't stand up to me or not. So, eventually, we come to the big double cross, right? When he kills the younglings. Why does he kill the younglings? Because the Jedi want to come after his now very good friend, only person he can trust, Palpatine, which is, as we know, for Palpatine's master plan, exactly where he wants him. Now, again, Vader came from nothing. 
You know, he's still that angry little slave boy. So he will protect what he has no matter what. Yo, one of the few people to slaughter Samuel L. Jackson. He <laughs> up Samuel L. Jackson, sent Samuel L. Jackson cruising off into the God knows where, and now you are officially Darth Vader. He has crossed the Jedi, and he knows that, but now... This one new guy Vader. ambushed. Right, seriously. I mean, and yeah. Now, it was a square square fight. Yeah. It was not as... No. Yeah. And he's still alive. <laughs> there is a fan theory... There is a fan theory it's, it's, it's that Mace Windu is still alive. Yeah, yeah. there is a there is a fan. Canada, I'm telling yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> so now uh, he's in a spot where obviously Padme is going to be pissed at him. Padme is going to be real pissed, and so is his buddy Obi Wan. You know, but hey, he he's crossed the line now. It's like now he's without a doubt he like he killed the younglings. He went to Mustafar, killed all of them. And when he has his fight with Obi-Wan, we all see how painful and dramatic and very flashy that whole fight was. You know, he gets hacked to pieces, which is fantastic because now he turns into the suffering that he's going through emotionally. He's always he's also going through physically, you know, and it's just he's just this walking symbol of suffering. And that's what makes him such a cold hearted killer. Now, you know, he thinks that no, Pat, uh, uh, Pal Palpatine told him that he accidentally killed uh, uh, Padme, whatever the case was. But now, again, he knows that Padme is dead and the man is, is suffering even more. So that makes him the conscienceless killer that he becomes planets dead like just the whole plan i mean all you got to do is say planet i mean that's the biggest oh. holocaust you can do in space like you just true an, but, but let's not forget the hallway full of rebel soldiers which was just awesome to watch yeah that's, so. a, yeah, that's a hallway of like 12 dudes do kill the planet all right that's not even an appetizer <laughs> for him at this point in his uh, uh murderous career so when does he now he's solidly evil the way at one point he was i don't think he was solidly good because he was always being challenged he was always finding himself he was always being questioned he was always trying to have a kind of control that he couldn't really hold on to because even as a jedi you can't have total control over everything that happens so where does he land now solidly evil but now he's being challenged by the emperor like there are some incidents in the books where um, him and the emperor are at each other's throats. So again, he's got that those questions happening. And then in comes Luke Skywalker, his only family. Only thing, but actually a person that wants to be his air quote friend. And so when he has the opportunity to kill again, but this time killing his former best friend for his son, he takes that opportunity. And... He kills Palpatine now, the person who, you know, he said was the only person that uh, he could trust in the entire universe. But now he supposedly brought balance to the force. Now I'm going to bring it back to Jesus Christ. When Jesus died and he air quotes, saved the world, a lot of people have the uh, principle that he saved the world. He gave human beings the tools to save the world because everybody's always like, you know, peace is right around the corner. Hey. Human beings uh, refuse to use those tools properly. I see you there with that loophole, Jesus. And so the same <laughs> thing goes for Vader. You know, like he just came in to balance the force, not get rid of the dark side. He died and fulfilled the prophecy of him bringing balance, balance. to the force. So the emperor, so he brought down the Jedi when they were too powerful, and now he's bringing down the empire when they've become too powerful. So he didn't come to bring peace. <laughs> Let's just remember that. <laughs> you know, what I always find amazing about Greg my my dear friend of many years now and and i value so much is how transparent he can be at times because greg always reads when we talk about star wars especially now with yeah frankly some very in-depth analysis like that was an analysis of someone who hates the franchise so exactly. much exactly it just 
treat it as if it's a fucking virus and they avoid it at all costs. No, that was the analysis of someone who is so well versed. I love, uh, by the way, I love the strategic leaving out of things you ask questions. Bitch, you know, you know the answer. <laughs> you read like a kid who actually loves a series or uh, an IP, but so disappointed <laughs> that they rather just walk around and tell people that they hate it while secretly consuming the shit out of it. That was so <laughs> fucking good as far as a breakdown of things that like there's no way in the world that you just hate it the way you do. Oh. Hold on. I got two more things. One, uh, Anakin definitely killed the younglings because they were better actors and he knew it right from the jump. And then two, mm. I actually always felt bad for Hayden Christensen because he's like, he's, because he's he fits a, a, a Hollywood version of what attractive can be or should be, blah, blah, blah. That to me, he always came off or read like the super tall kid that sucked at basketball or anything <laughs> athletic like you look at me you just feel bad like oh man you you don't have a chance like everyone's just gonna <laughs> uh, be expecting things from you man <laughs> like i just yeah shit. <clears throat> sorry uh, bro i i'm gonna, oh, yeah. I'm gonna uh, pick up him to have a good career <laughs> i i hope i hope whatever they bring him back for he does well he's he's bought no, a farm outside of, in, in ontario act. i know yeah because he can't act like that's yeah. the thing like so uh, well, yeah, hopefully he can by now to be on the screen kid but oh. like the athletic the, the non-athletic tall kid you just like uh, i hope you're good uh, at math i don't know yeah, yeah who knows uh, but yeah, I know he owns a, a farm in Ontario, so he used that money and you know got himself a good good piece of property. So good on him. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I know that much. I, I'm gonna uh, just pick up on your thought, Rashad, because I did. I I really I put Greg last because he told us he was gonna do uh, one way or the other. I think you started with Luke and then you went to Vader, and I'm like, okay, the Star Wars hater is gonna give us a treatise on Star Wars. I gotta hear that. Um, and I, I I feel like when I watch when I watch Greg go on Star Wars, he's the um, episode of South Park. Uh, uh, it's on, you know, when they when they have to join the dance contest and they go to the mm. goth kids and ask them to to join that. And the the first three are like, ah, that's so conformist. I'm not. I'm a nonconformist. I'm not going to do some stupid dance contest. And then the last goth kid steps up. It's like I'm such a nonconformist. I'm going to go with them to not conform with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's our man, the star child right there. <laughs> I mean, I, I'll take that. I'll, I'll, I'll happily take that criticism. You know, <laughs> I, I have no problem with that. You know, I mean, I again, it. you know what, like, to be clear, obviously I do like star Wars. I just don't mind saying that at least 60% of everything made for it is trash. Oh, uh, that's right. way it, too it, kind. Yeah, that is 60%. Well, no, because I'm when you get into you get well. into some of the when you get into some of the comics and you get into some of the graphic novels and all the right. books, like it gets a little bit better. Some okay. of the video yeah. games are yeah, good. Yeah, all right. Yeah, you know, now, right. now I see why you got yeah. 60%. Yeah. Yeah. Fallen okay. Fallen okay. Order, right. definitely yeah. a good game. And you all know right. what? And, yep. and here's the thing. It 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 also comes down to oh, I just want you to be better. I want yeah. you to be better. I want yeah. you. To, it's like I that. See everything it's like that speech be. in Winter Soldier. Only, or me and Vin Diesel. I, 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 yeah, all right. You know what I mean? Like, I want you to be you hear me, Vin? Vincent? Better. You know what I mean? Oh, God. I would, that, would, that would be just, I, I, I could never see it happening, but that would just be so funny. One day we just hear that deep voice. <laughs> He's going to catch me in the street one day. I'm, I'm telling you right now, I'm calling my shot. I'm like, I'm like the, the guy in fucking Don't Look Up. Like, I'm just going to go ahead and predict how I'm getting it. It's, it's <laughs> Diesel catch me in the street. I don't know. Maybe he fast and furious with me yeah. in the car. I don't know. Everybody that don't was. Fucking, that. He's going to. He's gonna fucking walk in the door of the club one day. Be like, I want to speak to this Rashad. He's just gonna show yeah. up at my door. He's gonna be like, why don't, you, why don't you tell me to be better in my face? And the fucked up thing is, you two know me. This is how I die. Uh, I'm like, be it. better. <laughs> this, huh? is how he dies. this is how it goes. <laughs> I don't miss. I have that a chance too. to survive, and I'm not taking it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
Ah, uh, well, on that cheery note, but you know, cheery but, but chance truthful note, Vin. If you if you're listening, you know, keep him around for us. He's he's a good guy. Like you know, they, like you can. I will you tell can, you to your you face. Can, be better. He'll tell him, but he's gonna tell you. Right we know that but uh, well uh, that's bringing us you know at the, the end of our of our meandering thoughts that brings us to the, uh, the end of a of another another conjunction here another meeting of the triumvirate in the steam tunnels here with with the steam gentlemen uh, i gotta get outside soon and start to shovel some snow because we're up in a part of the country that's finally gotten it we're we've been a little behind the rest of the, you know the west out there they've already been uh, you know more than more than gotten their fair share of snow uh, but while I have you here, if I can uh, ask you to pop on over to iTunes uh, or our Apple podcast, rate and review us, give us the review, preferably the five star. We hope for that. If you're going to do the, you know, if you're going to do lower than that, at least then, then leave something good in the, in the comments, uh, the comment section, let us know how we can grow, but we're really pushing for those five star review, trying to push that agenda of the steam gentlemen forward every day. Visit us and on, on the Facebook, the Facebook, got to go into my boomer mode uh, at uh, the Steam Gentleman Podcast. We are, that's our page there. We are, uh, do you even steam bro on Instagram and our, uh, our email box. If you want to send us that, that uh, feedback personally is do you even steam bro at gmail.com. Uh, we always appreciate that. And uh, I will leave, of course, you know, of course, it's that link to the merch, man. Got to get that merch going. Got to, got to work that merch game. Get out, get out there. Show us. Yep. Rashawn is representing today. Wearing that. I'm still in my pajamas. Yep. Work that mark. happened. I know. Right. I know I've got to yeah. change to go shovel. So I didn't bother. Uh, exactly. <laughs> that's, that's, that's life in New England. It's like, okay. Uh, pre shoveling wardrobe, post shoveling wardrobe. All right. Which yep. is amazing. Amazingly very similar. Uh, <laughs> if you can bring us on that, but uh, let the Rashawn, what do you, what, you know, other than uh, some, some kind words for Vin Diesel. <laughs> What do you got for us for the rest of the week there, three clubs? I mean, to be fair, I had some kind words for Hayden. You know, uh, it's true. It's true. You were you were pretty kind on Hayden. You know, I was talking, you know, once again, shout out to the Timmy Caps. You know, mm. all right. I, I yeah, still yeah. believe. You know. mm. I, I, I'm going to believe that, you know, one day maybe we get that Timmy Caps show going here. Once these I, numbers, if they ever if they ever come down again, you know. You know, the sad truth is, as much as I would love to hang out with him, and I'm sure he's a lovely man, I'm also a firm believer, which had a lot to do with our subject today, of never meet your heroes. Never meet your heroes. Yeah, <laughs> no, there's a lot, there was a lot going on in that in yeah. that in that subject matter today with that. So on that, Greg, any uh any any heroes with clay feet you're trying to to meet this week? Uh no, just want to say um you know, sad to um uh, hear about the passing of a hero, Sydney Poitier. Sydney, yes, thank you. Uh, passing of Sidney Poitier. That's 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 a huge loss for me personally. It's like, you know, because you know, back in the day when we didn't have cable, and like I said, you end up watching a lot of old movies. Like he was one of my first black stars, movie stars as a kid. Even though even at that time he was you know twenty years ahead of twenty years already in, but still, you know, loss of Sidney Poitier, civil rights. Um, and as well as, you know, just being groundbreaking in uh, uh, his uh, film career. Big loss for me personally. Love well, to Sidney Poitier. Much love to you, Sidney Poitier. Uh, who's, uh, I guess who's coming to dinner is still weird, but, you know, <laughs> love the man. Absolutely love the man. <laughs> well, well said. I would say it's a loss for humanity. I sincerely agree, and I can actually tell you, I've been very busy today, uh, and was dealing with some family matters and, and various stuff, so I hadn't heard it passed. So thank you. It actually happened you while we were recording. Okay, all right. So the news I was came not, out. Yeah. Or the news. I was, yeah. Okay, I was not on that. So, but uh, rest in peace for sure. And a, 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 a amazing actor, amazing activist, uh, and man, uh, and of course, uh, you know, uh, a, a hero to some. So a, a man of honor to go with our subject matter today with, with that at that. So thank you again for joining us today. And in the meantime, this is Josh the Birdman saying keep that heat up and keep your head of steam on.